Ziggy, do you want to come outside? You want to come outside? No, <laughs> you don't want to come outside? You don't want to come outside? Come on, buddy. No? You're still refusing to come out, huh? Okay. Well, as you can see, Ziggy is still refusing to come outside. Today there's some work going on next door, which you'll probably hear some sawing and pounding. Maybe that's why? I can't figure it out. He just doesn't... If anybody knows about dog behavior and can tell me, this dog used to just... He would get so excited when I do a video, he would see me getting the microphone and, and the little a little supporty thingy that I use to make the, the thingy higher, to make the laptop higher. And he would get excited and, and rush to the door. And uh, he, he still does that, but then he won't come out. That's the difference. Like, I open the door. It used to be I'd open the door and he'd rush right out. And now I open the door and he doesn't come out. But he still gets excited when he sees me picking up the microphone and he knows I'm going out to make a video. I, I don't get it. Dogs are weird. So, today's thing is I've been looking through Dogen's extensive record and I found some stuff that's interesting and I want to share it with you. In the end of the book, in chapter 8, chapter 8 section, volume 8, I guess they call it volume 8, there is a section called Hogo and Hogo means Dharma words, as direct translation, Ho is Dharma, Go is words. And in this section are several letters that he wrote to people, uh, different people. Fourteen. There's fourteen letters. Four of these letters are of particular interest to me because we know who he wrote them to. Uh, three of them are written to a nun named Ryonen, and I had thought maybe I'd do a whole series on those, and maybe I will. Uh, because there, pe because people ask me what uh, Dogen's relationship was to women who uh, followed him or who, who studied with him, and and this is about, about the only direct evidence we have of what relationship he had with them. And the uh, short answer, too long didn't read answer, is about the same as anybody else. He doesn't. He, the letters themselves are interesting in that they express interesting stuff about the Dharma and so on, but they're not particularly vastly different from the, the other letters that he wrote to other people. So he's pretty much, he teaches everybody pretty much equally. So that's the main lesson there, uh, if, if you want to know that part of the lesson. But this one I wanted to read you today is titled by translators Taigen Dan Leighton and Shohaku Okumura as The Young Mind of an Ancient Buddha. Now, Dogen did not give these letters titles. Uh, they, these are just added by the translators. But it's a, it's a pretty good title, I think. And it is a letter that he wrote to a 14-year-old uh, student of his named Gyogen. And apparently we don't know much more about Gyogen than that he was 14 and that his name was Gyogen. And that's, that's about it. But uh, he wrote Gyogen this interesting letter. And the reason it's interesting to me is, as uh, some of you may remember if you watch this video channel a lot, I wrote the book Hardcore Zen originally as kind of a very, very long letter to my then 14-year-old nephew, Ben. There was a, a piece of advice I once read from Kurt Vonnegut, one of my favorite authors, and he said that when he writes a book, he writes not to a kind of an audience in a kind of a generalized term, but he writes the book for one specific person. Uh, so he, he just you know, he thinks about that person as the person that he's writing the book for. And that's what I did with Hardcore Zen. I thought about Ben as the person I'm writing this book for. Now, it could be read by other people. You know, I sort of had this vague idea in mind that maybe other people might read it. But uh, it was specifically everything in there was, like, pinned towards something I thought Ben would understand and appreciate and be interested in. So, that was how I uh, addressed a 14-year-old. And here's how Dogen addresses a 14-year-old. The letter is fairly short, so I'm going to read the whole thing. Here we go. For young people, to follow a teacher is an excellent model since ancient times. Zen person Gyogen became a monk when he was 13 years old. Together with my assembly, in the morning he studied and in the evening asked for instruction. This is because he has had the strength of prajna, which is intuitive wisdom, 
for a long time. His age happens to match the time when Nanyue was captivated by the Buddha Wei, and his name matches half of uh, King Yuan's Jingxi's Dharma name. And the footnote says that these two were students of Huineng, the, uh, the sixth ancestor, the famous uh, platform sutra guy. This is naturally an auspicious coincidence, and indeed a fortunate example. So Dogen was, uh, he believed in coincidences. He believed in the meaning of coincidences. He didn't kind of get too New Agey and woo-woo about it, but you find it every so often in his writings that he'll mention a, what, you know, what a lot of people would kind of just toss off as a, a mere random coincidence, and find meaning in it. So he finds meaning in that. When he was 14, Nanyue abandoned the doctrinal teaching schools to study the way in practice. You are also 14 years old and are studying the way in accord with the Dharma. You two have become one, attaining thoroughly and thoroughly attained. So he and Nanyue have become one and, Nan and uh, uh, King Yuan has also become one with him. You should not be called a young person. You are simply an ancient Buddha. Studying the way of ancient Buddhas, you must directly embody the body and mind of the ancient Buddhas, which is exactly the dignified manner of this way of the ancient Buddhas. Basically Zazen, basically the practice that he's doing. The way is ancient, study is ancient, Buddha is ancient, everything is ancient. <laughs> I, I, he probably didn't write it with that tone in mind, but I, I like it that way. Even if you have a thousand or ten thousand, this is no other than a thousand ancients and ten thousand ancients. Now, uh, Nishijima Roshi very kindly gifted me his uh, version of Eihei Koroku, which, as you'll notice, is much, much thinner. Th this comes in two volumes, but even if you put these two together, they're, they're hardly um, match up to even half of this English version. And the reason is, in case you want to learn something from this video, it's one of the nice things about kanji, about the Chinese characters, is that you can fit a lot more information into a lot smaller space. In English, the way it's written in uh, letters that have to be pronounced out loud, uh, it takes a lot more space to convey the same amount of ideas. So there, you learn something. Uh, books translated into Japanese are always smaller than they are in English. So there you go. Anyway, the point I was making, sorry, I forgot the whole point. The point is that we, that sentence, I, I looked it up in, in the original, that sentence about even if you have a thousand or ten thousand, this is no other than a thousand ancients and ten thousand ancients. That's a good translation. I don't know what it means. You tell me. The ancient is not new. That's what uh, Dogen says. And then he says, a monk asked the national teacher Nyan Yu, Nan Yang Huizhong. I'm used to having, hearing these in the Japanese pronunciation, and this one uh, gives them in the Chinese pronunciations, which I have a trouble trouble with. Which I have a trouble with. Which I have trouble with. Anyway, here we go. Uh, he asked, "What is the mind of the ancient Buddhas?" The teacher said, "Fences, walls, tiles, and pebbles." That's a very common thing that Dogen uh, repeats over and over. And one day, I mentioned this at. Uh, the Angel City Zen Center, and I was like, gonna try to be cagey about it. I was like, yeah, it's like that thing Dogen says in it, fences, walls, tiles, and pebbles. And I just got blank stares, and I'm like, Jesus, I've said this like a hundred times, <laughs> fences, walls, tiles, and pebbles, reading Dogen, and nobody recognized it, and it was really depressing. Anyway, so you guys out there in video land, just remember, Dogen says that a lot. What is the mind of ancient Buddhas? Fences, walls, tiles, and pebbles. The answer is fences, walls, tiles, so if it comes up on Jeopardy. Fences, walls, tiles, and pebbles, then you would say, what is the mind of ancient Buddhas? That's the... uh, also, a monk asked Nanyuan Daoming, what is the mind of ancient Buddhas? The teacher, Nanyuan Daoming, said, mountains, rivers, and the great earth. That's another answer, so mountains, rivers, and the great earth. You would also answer back to uh, Alex Trebek in, you know, the, the late Alex Trebek, you would answer, um, what is the mind of ancient Buddhas? So both answers would work for you. There's the sawing I told you about. Suppose someone asked me, what is the mind of ancient Buddhas? I would say to him, the four great elements and the five skandhas. Now that's a little bit of a more rare version of the answer, but that's what uh, Dogen says. These three exchanges are good models. You should know that for 8,000 or 100,000 miles, the ancient Buddhas 
are separate from the self and land and are separate from body and mind. They are the entire realm of self and land and are the entire realm of body and mind. So there he is putting what I think Nishijima Roshi would call uh, two of the four views. So in one sense, they are separate from the body and mind, and in one sense, they are the same as the body and mind. So two views of the same subject. Although this is so, the ancient Buddhas are never hidden. So this would be probably uh, Nishijima Roshi's third view, so the, the view of action in, in, uh, in action, the ancient Buddhas are never hidden. So wherever you look, there's the ancient Buddhas. So I'm looking around at this uh, plot of land in Los Feliz, and here is the ancient Buddhas, and you're looking at this computer screen, uh, me, uh, the ancient Buddhas. Anyway, they're never hidden. Wherever you look, there they are. Disciple Gyonen, having the fortune to study thoroughly in this way, you will finally have realization. And maybe that would be Nishijima's uh, reality, you know, uh, su subjective, objective, action, and reality. So uh, as long as he studies, he's going to get it sometime, which is a nice, hopeful message. And it's one that you find from a lot of teachers in these non-dual traditions. The, the basic idea is that once you started, you, you're going to reach the finish line one of these days, but the other point is there's no finish line because you're already there. The, the far shore is already here. And the most interesting thing to me there is, is kind of the same thing that was uh, the answer I gave you as to how did he talk to uh, his female disciples and, uh, and his 14-year-old uh, disciples and any disciples. He basically taught everybody the same way. You know, there's no evidence that he uh, changed his uh, teaching style for anybody. He just did his best to convey things uh, in in the the. He, he gave everybody the full treatment. You know, he didn't he didn't hold back. He didn't, you know, kind of give one t sort of answer for one type of person and another sort of answer for another type of person. I'm sure that uh, when he was speaking to people one on one, he spoke to them the way you spoke, speak to them one-on-one, -on -one. and maybe this is a, a, a good example of how he spoke to somebody one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, these are letters, as I said, and that's kind of interesting to me, too, because there was no such thing as the post office or the, Amer you know, what, are they, what did we learn in school, the Pony Express and all that stuff. That, uh, even that didn't exist in those days. Uh, so I don't know how letters got from one person to another. Maybe in this case it was just handed to uh, to the kid, to, um, what's his name? <laughs> I've forgotten his name. Gyonen? Because there's a Gyonen and a Gyogen. Yeah, there's a Gyonen and a Gyogen, anyway. So he might have handed this right to him because uh, because he was there. But uh, other things he sent off and and he, in order to keep a copy of it, he would have had to write it once and then write it again. And apparently, according to the notes in this book, uh, some of these letters actually still survive in Dogen's own handwriting. So uh, we have some examples of them. So that's it. That's what. Uh, that's how Dogen talked to a 14-year-old. It's um, not exactly the same as uh, hardcore Zen. It's the same in the sense that he doesn't uh, he doesn't dumb it down or anything for for a 14 year old. He just says exactly what he would say to anybody else, and uh, and hopes that it would be understood. So I just thought that was interesting and something I wanted to share today. Somebody was criticizing that I don't put any time and effort into my videos, and I obviously don't even care about them. That was a comment that I got on the last video. You can go look at it if you want. And I think that's funny because I spent a lot of time on this one, and I spent a lot of time on a lot of them. There are a few that I kind of do off the cuff, but uh, even those uh, I, I really do care about. So, you know, whatever, you know, you'll see whatever you want to see, I suppose. Anyway, if you want to donate, oh yeah, he got mad because I asked for donations. Here you go. Um, if you want to donate to me, uh, there's the URL right below. It is because that is my only way of making a living. Maybe the guy who's writing this comment has a regular job, but I don't. And this is my regular job. Uh, and uh, my other regular job has been suspended for the past uh, year. So we will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Oh, also, if you're having financial trouble, if you're the guy who's writing me the comments and you're having difficulty, don't, don't send me any money. I always say that. Don't send me any money. But if you can, that's great because that's how I keep going and that's how I buy Ziggy dog food and everything else and that's what goes on here. Have a good time all the time. See you later. Bye.